I was very fortunate to have Mark Silber, uh, a great photographer, a great guy, just a super. You ever meet somebody mm -hmm. like you meet him for the first time, you feel like you've known him forever. Mark oh, yeah, is that absolutely. kind of guy, and uh, he he's written a book on composition, and he did a really unique thing with it that I think makes it worth talking. Mark was here in, uh, at our offices, and I said, "Can I please do an interview with you for the Grid?" So he was kind enough to let me do an interview. We're going to run the interview now. When we come back, I'm going to do a little bit more post processing, and then we're going to wrap things up. But let's check out this quick interview uh, with Mark about his brand new book. So hi guys, here I am with the author of The Secrets to Creating Amazing Photos, 83 Compositional Tools for the Master. Please give a nice welcome to Mark Silver. Mark, how you doing? Scott, I'm, I'm stoked to be here. I really am. Hey, so tell me how you got the idea for this book. Now I want to tell you up front, I, I already downloaded it, I've read it. This is, is really, really a super helpful book. I'm glad to hear that. How did you wind up uh, writing did, this book? Okay, well, you know, I wrote this previous book. This is uh, called Advancing Your Photography based on my video series where I've interviewed hundreds of different photographers. It's a complete handbook of photography. It goes through the entire process, starting with visualization, which is super important, <laughs> knowing what you're going to shoot. And it goes through the entire spectrum. But having written that, you know, I've been asked so many times, how can I improve my composition? So I thought, you know, I'm going to dig into this subject. And the thing that I found right off the bat, which was really interesting, is there's a kind of a common misconception. On one hand, you get the school of thought. You know, there's no way to really teach composition. It's sort of an intuitive thing. You have to just sort of feel your way there, OK? Yeah. That's, that's kind of one school. And the other school is, it's nothing but a set of rules. And if you just follow these rules, you'll somehow come out with a good photograph. Well, the truth lies somewhere in the middle. I was going to say, middle. there's got to be something it, it, in between it's, there. Um, yeah, it's right in between. <laughs> you know, the thing is, when you learn to cook, you follow recipes. Mm -hmm. When you learn guitar, what do you do? You learn chords. Yeah. You, you don't just take a guitar out and start plunking and hoping that, you know, some beautiful sounds will come out. I'm still waiting for beautiful sounds to come out of mine. Well, mine too. <laughs> there, it's, you keep working on it, eventually those beautiful sounds will I'm show hoping. up. I'm <laughs> hoping. You know, it's going to happen, I guarantee it. But the premise of this book is I basically dug really deep to find what are the formulas, what are the tools or the recipes, if you will, for composition that masters, not just in photography, but painting, have used over mm -hmm. the years. Because if we can learn those, you can expand your vocabulary as an artist. Well, there's, I tell you, I, I got to look through it. First off, can we start with the cover? Can we, can we get a close? I love the cover <laughs> shot because it, it screams compositional, right? So where's this taken? That is taken at the D'Orsay Museum in Paris. Well, of course it is, Mark. Where, where <laughs> you know, of course, you know, where uh, it used to actually be a train station and they turned it into a museum. So you have that beautiful clock. You look through the clock into Paris. Now, my wife is the model. Oh, well, that was handy. And she, <laughs> very handy to come with my own model. And she also art directed it. And you notice it's, she's not dead center in the center. No, she's not dead center. On purpose. And that's why it looks so awesome. <laughs> well, that happens to be one of the compositional techniques that I talk about, which this one represents. We love patterns. Patterns, you know, intrigue the eye and catch the eye. But something even better than a pattern is where you break the pattern. Oh, yeah. Right? Because that repeated pattern, we are drawn to patterns. We're drawn like, to patterns. Look at, look at rugs, right? Yeah. Like if you go to like a hotel, there's always a pattern. They walk in, there's repeating patterns everywhere. But you're right. When you see the same thing over and over again and something stands out. It pops out. Yeah. So if you break the pattern, this is, a re this is one of the compositional tools. You break the pattern, you bring about an intriguing image. Yeah. You know what I do if I go to the beach and I see a row of like 15 yellow umbrellas? That's the pattern? That's the pattern. Put a model in there, right? Oh, no. I go change one of the colors. Okay. I change one of the umbrellas to red. Exactly. <laughs> I'm like, cheating. But that's breaking the pattern. It's a perfect example of what you're talking about. It, yeah. Well, this book is full of stuff like that. That's the point. So I'm trying to give a broader vocabulary. I think, I'll, unfortunately, many photographers walk around, take the same five images over and over hmm. again. I'm guilty of that. I've taken so many sunsets, I just won't even do it anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, but if you can broaden that, vocabulary like if you have more tools or better rest more recipes you're going to be better at your craft well this this book certainly has those tools and i and i think 
I, I mean, the way you've laid it out, it's very pragmatic, it's very straight to the point, and with great examples. I thought your examples Thank in you. here were particularly good. So guys, uh, run to wherever books are sold. Now, Amazon these are at Amazon, at Barnes & Noble. Yeah, all over. At, at brick and mortar stores, B and H photo B and H carries it. Yep. Right. And and what I love about it is you will turn to a particular page and there's like a nugget all the way through and stuff. But I, I mean, now this is your own photography in here. Right? Most of it. I have a few from friends. But wow. Almost all of them are others. Well, are my photographs. There's great <laughs> photography, but the the photographs so do such a wonderful job of illustrating the points. You know, it's interesting, Scott. When I was writing it. I tend to write and use my illustrations at the same time. You know, I don't like to just write and then later come back and throw illustrations. So I'm, as I'm writing it, I'm just going through my library in Lightroom going, okay, I got to find an example of this. And I was amazed at how many of these I had that must have just been done intuitively because I didn't know at the time that it was that compositional right. technique. Right, but you're empl you're employing those all day long in your own photography. That's so right. So probably finding examples of where somebody wasn't in the center and finding, you know, leading lines and so some of the things that I saw in the yeah. book. And I mean, you, you probably have just treasure troves of those. There, you know, I was... I was so happy to see, okay, I have photographs from all over the world. And it was just great to do like a hide and seek thing. Where is, <laughs> where is this one here? You know? And so I could dig in there and find those. You know what else I like? Uh, I like the size of the book. It fits inside your camera That's bag. That's the point. So you could take it out with you, right? It's like a six by nine. And the other thing I like about it is there's a thing that we have. It's a book industry thing. It's called flip appeal. That when you flip it open, do you go, yeah. ooh, is this, is this a book I would like? And this has great flip appeal. Partially because you open it up and there's just so many good pictures. That one's kind of naughty. But uh, A naughty? I have no, a naughty? No, wait a, a minute. I missed no, that one. it was a fine art. It's a fine art <laughs> shot. And it's, it's, you know, we're allowed to do things in fine art that you couldn't yeah, do. Yeah, I, I totally understand. That's, how I, that's where the term fine art came. Yeah, She's fine. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but there's so many great examples in here. And uh, thank you for sharing it with us here. Um, one it, of my uses of it, by the way, is just what you said. Like, you're out on a, you know, you're going to Paris or you're traveling around and you're thinking, I want to... I want to get some different photographs than I normally come away with. You literally could flip through here until you get something inspirational. Oh, yeah. And it, go, okay, that would work here. You know, that one works here. You know, or that doesn't work. Maybe it won't work in this case, but it'll work somewhere else. Ooh, I just saw a very nice motion blur effect. Yeah, it? that's my sons. That's three of my boys on a bicycle. Look at that. Yeah, look at that. And so, look at that for, for showing uh, motion. So the, that one is about viewpoint. And the thing is, if you crouch down low, I could have stood back from these guys. Okay, and I, perspective. And, I, and yeah. I could have stopped the motion. But yep. instead of that, I moved, I panned with them to get their viewpoint of these three kids on the bicycle. Well, fantastic. So this is a whole book of that. It's a whole book of that. And it's 83, you know. So the thing is, it amazed me to find these different compositional tools. Because I had, uh, I didn't know there were that many, personally. I also like that you've mixed some of the fine art masters in. It's not just photography. Because we were talking earlier, right, actually right before we went on the air, we were talking about... Uh, Joey L. Yeah, about Joey and, and how he, he learned. And you guys, if, if you haven't, haven't looked up Joey... Go look up. He just goes by Joey L. And Joey he's a L. Tremendous child prodigy photographer. And he very, started very at famous. 16 on the first Twilight set, shooting right. stills. Isn't that crazy? And I asked him, you know, because I've interviewed all these different guys, and I asked him, so Joey, how did you learn composition and lighting? And he said, I looked at the masters. I said, what do you mean? Yeah, Rembrandt, Vermeer. The point is, photography, believe it or not, Scott, this is going to sound shocking. It wasn't just developed two years ago on Instagram. What? I know. That's a shock. I thought that's when photography was born, it was pretty, from Instagram. Most everybody no? thinks that, but it turns out it goes back <laughs> 150 years. But where did photography come from? It grew out of art. You know, and these masters, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, they knew their stuff, obviously. Those compositional techniques hold true in photography, they hold true in painting. Because what are you doing with composition? You're filling a frame. Yep. That's all it is. For the most part, it's a rectangle. Sometimes it's a square. I shoot with my Hasi. And what did a painter do? They filled a frame. They filled a canvas. Yeah, they did. And it's really, that's what composition is, is how do you fill that frame to tell the story the way you want to tell it? There you go. Well, guys, go pick it up. It's in bookstores now. It just came out. I want to give you the title again, The Secrets to Creating Amazing Photos, 83 
compositional tools from the masters mark thank you so much scott thanks my for pleasure. sharing this with and i wish you the very best on your brand new book a very worthwhile book highly recommended go pick it up right now stop what you're doing and go order the book